All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between what you see from a software capture device and what you see in the hardware capture device and the information you're losing when you capture things via software. And to test this, I have a Beagle USB 12 device. And what's kind of cool about it is you don't have to be testing on your target device. So you can have a separate computer that's actually logging all the information than the actual device that the USB is connected to. And the way this works is on this end, right over here, it's the device that's going to be logging the information. And over here is the actual capturing end. So over here, I've got a USB keyboard and it's connecting, in this case, both to my computer and this part's also connected to my computer. So I'm logging the same place that the keyboard is connected to. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Wireshark and show you what you'll see and what you'll see when you capture via the Beagle from a hardware device. Just be, all right, so we want this little ch keyboard right here. So that's number seven. On bus one. All right, so like a lot of this stuff, I've shown multiple times, but what we see is we get the description, the device description, and then we uh, get the class description. Let's see. Right here, right here, um, or the device configuration. And from there, when we press the button, we get these uh, USB interrupt events. So that's what happens on Wireshark. Now, what we see when we open up the Beagle, there we go. All right, and what we're gonna do is just like before, we're going to plug in the keyboard and see what messages we get. Okay, so nothing, plugged in, and right now we've got a whole bunch of messages. And right off the bat what you see is we're getting all these knacks. And the way interrupt keyboards work is your computer's constantly pulling, and in Wireshark you're not going to see this. You'll just see the actual interrupts. But when you actually look at the actual data, you'll actually see tons of these interrupts because it has to constantly keep checking the keyboard to see if there's any new data. And what's happening in the background is the computer is actually handling all these NACs in hardware. So it's never actually even going up to the software driver to actually even manage these. So that's why Wireshark is not actually seeing them over here. It just sees the parts that she manages. And just like um, these snacks, it doesn't manage the actual um, setting the address. So here we're getting the device description at index zero, which is the first step to getting a proper address at seven. In Wireshark, we just started at uh, seven. It never, you're never gonna see these zeros. And, cause that's all done in hardware. So we can see the set address. It's resetting the device to turn back and off and on again to set to a known state. And at this point, it is considered device seven. All right, cool. So we have a device address now. All right, and now let's actually look at some of these packets. So if we click one of these, we can see that the uh, packet is actually a whole bunch of packets. Unlike Wireshark, which just shows one big message, um, in this message is actually multiple packets. So we can see the first part is the host telling the keyboard, to get the description and the keyboard is acknowledging that. And at this point, the keyboard is sending 
three different packets, each with a max data length of eight. And that's currently because the largest packet size is eight bytes until you've configured it to go up higher. So it has to, this is all one big, this is gonna be all for one message, but it has to send it in these eight bit chunks. And you can see that right here, 18. That's the total amount of data bytes the device is sending back. So if you chunk that up, we get eight, eight. And I think this is a kind of acknowledgement. I don't actually know what that is. All right, so that's that. And similar thing with the keyboards. We can see a couple keyboard presses here where we can see the data from the keyboard getting sent back. Um, and then a whole bunch of knacks afterwards. So I created this video just to show you the distinction between what you see in Wireshark and what you see when you start to actually look at the specifications. Uh, when, I first, when I first started looking at the specifications, I was confused because I didn't see all the things that I was reading. I wasn't seeing these knacks. I wasn't seeing these resets. Um, I wasn't seeing some of these messages. And that's all stuff that's taken in by the hardware, um, which is fine. That's because it uses less resources on your end. Um, it just left me a little confused from what I was reading and what I was seeing. So I thought I would just show you uh, what was actually happening behind the scenes. Um, at this point, I have no further plans on specific topics I want to talk about when it comes to USB. So if you have any thoughts or suggestions, just leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do.